Hello everybody, today's video is going to be quite a Christmassy but different video. It's going to be a daily routine of a Wrangler working in the frozen Dino Valley. The day of the Wrangler typically starts at 5am, which was frightfully early for me. I normally wake up at about 5.30, crawl out of bed, feed the horses and then crawl back into bed until about 8. So when the my phone alarm went off at 5am, and I knew I had to get out for good, it was a bit of a reality check. Wranglers, there were only several Wranglers left, however, they all share the same food source. One Wrangler will get up extra early and make all the other Wranglers um, breakfast. As I didn't know how to make the traditional meals, I opted out for this one, so I just got a basic traditional Wrangler meal. They were like these weird like pancake things so I just opted for them as I quite like pancakes and they tasted pretty decent. As you can tell underneath this pair of insulated bre breeches from my sponsors at Crack Stamper there was another lightweight pair. I was wearing my thickest warmest riding boots, a big straw, a big woolly hat and a big woolly jumper. So definitely quite warm and gloves because yeah you gotta write in gloves right then I just sat down and had my pancakes which were I'm, I can't see the traditional name for them but I'm not going to lie they were really good so definitely definitely worth it and yeah you can also get a morning hot beverage from this cold drone however being a 5-1 I, um, this is kind of embarrassing, but I really had to reach to get the hot beverage. It was quite a struggle, but we got it in the end and I sat right by the fire because it was cold. I'm cold just thinking about it. Like, you can hear me shivering, but yeah. So you can see, bang myself down on this bench and drank my beverage. Once I'd eaten that beverage, once I drank my beverage, oh my gosh, loved it. Warm beverage. It, this place is so nice. It's like it's like these flowers, herb things mixed with hot boiling water. And when you're in that kind of heat, it was awful. Then, um, and then it's hitting about six a.m. by the time we're ready and raring to go. Then then we'll go check the notice board, as you can see on the side of that tent. It gets stuck up early in the, in the morning, and it basically tells you what horse you're on. I knew what the night before what horse I was on but to make it more realistic I went and checked. And then I went and caught my horse however the night before I just caught him myself. This is Sol, a beautiful Norwegian wild horse. There are loads here in Dino Valley and it's so nice to have one. As you can see he was in a very fancy head collar with a thermal like fleece very thick New Zealand mug and I don't blame them for putting them in such thick rugs. Horses here as well do not never get clipped unless they move out of the area. So yeah. This place has caught very a lot of history, so yeah. In the mornings they always like to give them a they always like to pat them and kind of generally brush them through. However, as they're not clipped really ever, it's quite hard. So yeah, this was the finished product. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually green them, I just stroked a bit. And brushed and brushed, you know, they don't normally do, it's not traditional. Then I grabbed him off the tree that he was tied to and just walked him up. This is a daily practice to make sure horses are fit to ride. The Wranglers often ride for about 10 hours, so if horses are just a little bit lame, it could seriously affect them. If they are lame, they will be put in a special horse care facility that only lame horses are allowed in. I was staying in, I want to say the capital of Nino Valley, but it really wasn't the capital. It's more like a few tents, a few horse care facilities, and, a sh and two shops. <laughs> so, you know, north and a mailbox. No, and a crashed air balloon. So that's really the only thing there. So that was a bit weird, especially for myself that lives near the town, the capital of Fergrove, which is Fergrove. <laughs> anyway, now he had trotted up completely sound, as you can see, he was pulling some funny faces. Now time for me to tack up. 
Wranglers are very famous for only dressing their horses in the bare necessities. So he got put in this in this western saddle with a very basic, very simple bauzel bridle, as you can see here. Then you will never take the rugs off, it's the rules, so then you just switch them to a saddle pad because, yeah. This is the finished look of what a Wrangler horse will look like. Traditionally, nobody in the Wrangler squad will wear helmets. However, due to insurance reasons, and I just want to protect my head, baby, I just decided to put on my everyday riding helmet. But yeah, it's now time for me to lead him down to the block, get on, and to start trekking. It was quite a reality check going down, because out here, horses are more seen as something that you ride and um, riding's more of a work job rather than something for ple pleasure, pleasure and in my case as a professional rider of it. <laughs> the basis, this is really everything. There's a high perception of myth in your vic that wranglers literally just get on and leave but they actually don't. They will actually warm up their horses to make sure that they are ready for any situation as you can see me doing here. The reason that they do this is because, honestly, in Nino Valley, because of the amount of animals, wolves, horses need to be ready and warm enough to canter away if there's an emergency. So making sure that they are fit and fit to canter and gallop is super important. But I remind you guys, also, these horses are used to being like trotted for like 10 hours straight. They are super fit. As you can see here, I'm quite an inexperienced rider in the... Um, Mongolian tap they use, so I'm not the biggest. It's like a Western and Mongolian tack like cross. So please do uh, not hate on me. Like I'm really, really not that experienced when it comes to riding in this pack. Yes, I am a professional rider and everything, but like please do not judge because I am not very experienced when it comes to wearing this kind of tack. So yeah, so that's kind of why. As you can see here, in this little almost arena paddock style, we I warmed my horse up for the day. It was yeah, as I said, I had Stork Soul, who was a who was a seven year old Norwegian wild horse. I think he's eight now. As you can see, they encourage us to do loads of difficult work with them, loads of tight turns to kind of try and optimize the thing. And then, as you can see, the one away from the tight time which would practice me dodging a tree or whatever we've also got to warm up in the jumping which was probably the easiest there are some cross country jumps well when i say cross country there are some jumps jumping kind of into the settlement as you can see this view was beautiful but I had to focus on the actual jumping i just cantered him in popped this really nicely has quite a weird jump but apparently that's He's super like normal for a real vegan wild horse, so then they came from it from the other direction. Yes, they're just a few boxes that they call cross country jumps, but it's fine. As you can see here, they just encouraged me to do it a few times, like they said, three times would be fine, just so they could kind of be warmed up for the logs that were on the track. As you can see here, once he was completely warm over it, it was now time for to set off. Being a wrangler is such hard work and this is probably one of the most difficult lifestyles, if not the most difficult one style in Quebec. Not only looking after the land and the people that you're responsible for as well, but you're also looking after the horses. And to be honest, it's a lot harder. For example, if one of my horses came in from the field lane or here they turn them out on a frozen lake, which is really weird to me, but yeah. If one of my horses came in lame from the field, first thing that I do is call my vet. She lives about five to ten minutes away, so she'd come down super quickly. Even if it was just they had a bit, they'd been kicked in the field and there was a bit of a bruise on their leg, she would be down there in minutes to make sure it wasn't anything severe. Out here, the closest vet stop is an hour. Yes, they have a bit of an on like that, but if a horse colicked, it would be quite scary. <laughs> it's just a very, as well as the fact that, say, if I run out, ran out of food unexpectedly, so the mice have got to them or anything like that, it's about a two minute drive to the local market, to the supermarket, to pick up literally anything I want from fruit and vegetables to like even like hot cross buns in like summer. So 
yeah, I can pretty much get anything I want. However, here they get delivered a monthly parcel of food, including some tins, some fresh, and then the rest they either save or take from the land. This is such a big reality to me, and also the fact that a lot of people who ride will just do it it's quite pleasurely for profit, not really for profit, just as like a chill hobby that they'll do outside of work school or university. However, working wranglers here, the wranglers are actually paid by the Norwegian government to control, control the land and make sure that everything is in order. Dino Valley is so freaking cold, it's a massive stretch of land that's pretty much unusable so making sure it stays in good condition is super important also if you guys don't know governments get money if they have bigger or well, open spaces that's nice anyway this is our first proper challenge of the day it was just a log however as a professional eventer i think we aced it so that was pretty cool the fact that a what seven or eight year old could jump such amazing challenges was incredible for me at the time when they're seven i will be getting them out to some small competitions and maybe jumping them over some 90-ish fences the fact that he can just canter like that into a solid log is absolutely incredible as you can see this place is really wild there are some tracks through the snow and and everything but they're like cobble so they're kind of i remember that from a history lesson from when i was in school that there used to be loads of infrastructure the government the Norwegian government thought they could do loads of stuff in dino valley but it just ended up to all fail so <laughs> mining operations and stuff all failed so that's why they're kind of a cobbled road but it's really really worn away as the wranglers all come down here every single day so yeah it's quite a weird sensation being in Dino Valley. It's quite open and really not that misty, which I wasn't expecting when I see pictures online of Dino Valley. It's really not, like, like, like misty and things, but it was actually quite unexpectedly misty. Like, I thought it would be a lot worse than this, but it wasn't, which was nice. As you can see here, having a quiet little counter up this hill, sped up a little bit, but yeah. It's quite weird to be a wrangler for 24 hours, as you kind of saw here. Well, I kind of arrived the night before at like 9 pm and then went straight to bed because obviously, if I didn't wake up, it'd be a bit hard. And then, and then I left that evening um, just after dinner so I could get home and yeah, make sure I went to bed early enough for my day next day. Anyway, it was quite a weird sensation being a wrangler for 24 hours. It was very isolated is definitely also something I noticed in the modern world. You know, you've always got TV or radio on, especially on the RV or all radio themes. We always have a radio on. Even if I, like, at night when there's no in the RV, there'll be a radio on somewhere. And it was quite weird out here because, you know, there wasn't, there wasn't even like a bit of music to go on it. But yeah. <laughs> And as you can see here, the horses are incredibly fit. They can just be hundred miles. I guess a little bit of that is they don't get that hot. Just, yeah. The daily kind of jobs of a wrangler is to go up to all the mountains, make sure they're all doing okay, and then come back over the ice. As you can see here, one of the, probably the, my favourite things about it is this weird looking cave. You'll see it on camera in a minute. As you can see, it looks like, like some jewels or something, but yeah, it's a super cool cave. And, definitely one day would like to come outside and see. I guess this was a bit of a holiday for me personally. As someone that owns a lot of horses at home, like I don't get, go away that much, so it's quite nice to come out here for kind of 24 hours. Also, it was a horsey holiday, so that was pretty fun. My sister's um, playing some Cluedo with my family as I'm trying to record this voiceover. <laughs> she gets very competitive, but yeah. Then, as you can see, there was this very steep incline. You can see how I stopped and was like, guys, is this like okay? And then you're like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Like, I don't see why you are scared of it, but yeah, <laughs> it's a bit big for me, personally, very big for me. Then we just went on a patrol of the entire valley. We camped up this hilltop. They don't like to go down every time as it's like a lot, but just double checking everything, as you can see there at the end, that's wild woods, but. You can't really truck over there because of there's quite dangerous mountain ranges. Um, you can get over there by a helicopter, but it's quite hard. 
Anyway, at this point it was about lunchtime, so we decided to stop at the side of the road, dismount, tie our horses up, and just have a little bit of lunch because I was absolutely starving. Um, they have this weird contraption where they can keep things warm, which was godsend. So I kind of sat with them, had a quick chat, had some traditional, like, it was almost like a curry stew thing, but it was like not like a curry stew, if that makes sense. Anyway, this was a quick clip that one of the wranglers got on me, waiting for my food, as you can see, very, very expectantly, because it was absolutely hungry. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was the completed round. Once we had finished, but yeah, once we had finished, we then got back on our horses and you know when you've been sitting somewhere for quite a long time and the seat's kind of warm that was kind of what happened with the saddle anyway after lunch to warm ourselves and the horses back up we decided we have like a gallop this was one of the only gallops i did and we did two this was one of them we did them both in the afternoon as you can see and it was quite a nice thing to do I felt like the horses almost were quite, like, not stiff, but almost frozen, and this really helped them lengthen out. We galloped for quite a long time. Normally on my horses, I definitely wouldn't do this, but as I said before, these horses are crazy fit, so it's kind of a uh, low-key under saddle. Anyway, then it came up to another log, which we had to jump. It was almost like a related distance, which was quite scary there was a bigger log to come out and then we missed the turning which was a bit silly of us and then i showed off my amazing steering in a bozal bridle and we were ahead of the bed and then we just cantered down the slope a little bit we actually went past this train wreck to make sure everything was okay with it they can't clear it away due to the fact that you know you can't get really any vehicles down here and it's too big for horses to get down but still quite a nice thing to kind of look at we then went down into this corner, made sure everything was okay. We were on a frozen lake at this point, guys. This was scary. Then we had another gallop across the frozen lake, which was incredible. Love this colour. As you can see, this is the massive dinosaur. This is how it, this valley got its name. This massive dino that takes up the entire valley, which is Lukin's Lane. We are not allowed to go in it as for safety reasons. However, you're allowed to go pretty close to it. And I want to say that I did go close to this dino because it was massive. They say that you should always come from the plains here. I definitely saw why. Anyway, now we have pretty much done this. It was now time for us to encounter this stream of the freezing weather. And there was this bridge over it, which you kind of had to jump up to, which took a little bit of an extra jump to. It didn't even make it up. So had to circle them back round. Try again. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I technical difficulties. My bad. Sorry. Anyway, then I had to take a leap basically from walk and then just pop back again, back down. So there were a few kind of bridges across the thing. As I said, you can't really jump across the water, that's not really loud, but then just popped up on this bit of ice here leap this because for some reason yeah sorry guys for some reason it keeps on doing that sorry and then we came up to this path that started to cool them down a little bit and yeah as you can see just trotting them back up but yeah and after this we decided as we needed to do quite heavy work on the horses to make sure they were nice and warm we didn't film anything until we were turning that so that's kind of that but yeah after this, we just, yeah, turned them out, as, you can, as I said, yeah, as you can see, having a bit of free time in the field. It's in a paddock and a head collar, but yeah. It's in the paddock in a head collar, just in case it's an emergency. And then I sprinted up because I was so freaking cold, ready for food. I was kind of late because I had to film the segment, and also, it was so cold I wanted to run up anyways. Maybe to warm me up. Also, the wranglers have to go running for a certain amount of time every day, so I was trying to get my run in quite aches I didn't want to run after I eat for obvious reasons <laughs> e.g. pain. Currently the wranglers are trying to get permission from the all European government to get a horse care facility or a like stables and um, I'm wishing them all the best of luck with that. I think this place would do great for a stables maybe the horses could go in overnight but yeah. Then I looked at some of the t-shirts up for sale as you can see here <laughs> for an extra layer I know. And then Apparently they had, they cooked me up especially a lovely Peruvian meal, which is where I'm from, but yeah. 
love you for agreeing me all up for me, which I was like, oh my gosh, thank you. But yeah, these were in the boxes that they had delivered. Because, yeah. Anyway, then I grabbed mine. This is going to be the end of today's video. Um, because after this, I just grabbed mine out. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I was kind of struggling to open the boxes. Story of my life, can never do anything. I love that. We love, love, love that. We love incompetency. Anyway, and mm -hmm. I ended up getting it out in the end, which was amazing because I was so hungry. I couldn't function anymore. But yeah, thank you so, so much for watching today's video. After this, I just ate with them, chatted a bit, and then my dad came, picked me up, and took me back home where I did just the night checks on the horses and went to bed. I'm <sighs> definitely appreciating my warm bed and feeling a little bit sorry for the mangoes. They all have to live in tents. Anyway, I'm really wishing them the best of luck in getting a little village set up because that's what they're trying to get. They're struggling with planning permission. Still have a life, okay? Everybody, planning permission. Just give it to them. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. It's a very, very different vlog to what I normally make. So, yeah. I love you all. Please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye, bye.